Hello everyone, Denise here. Today I'm going to show you how to make a top-down hat, uh, meaning that the brim is done last for any size person. Let's get started. So I'm going to be showing you on worsted weight yarn and an eye hook. Uh, the yarn is, I love this yarn by Hobby Lobby. It is in the color sea blue. Just a light color so it'd be easier to see on camera. Uh, my hook is a hybrid. This is one of the Yarnology hooks from Hobby Lobby. And I took out the plastic hook inside and I put a Clover Amore hook in there. So it's working so far. I'll let you know if it fails on me. <laughs> so, all right, let's get started. So every hat that I start top down starts with a magic circle. I will show you how I do that. I know a lot of people do not do that, so I will show you the chain four method as well. So to begin a magic circle, I lay it in my hand like this. I cross over the yarn like this, and then I put the hook in and pull up a loop. And then I rearrange the yarn in my hand so that the working yarn is over here and I'm holding the tail with my fingers. You see that? And then I chain one to secure it. Now, whatever I decide to do in the circle, I can cinch it by pulling the end. Okay. So if I'm creating a top-down head, it doesn't matter what stitch I am using. If I am using a single crochet, a double crochet, half double crochet, a triple crochet. It does not matter what stitch I'm using, the method is the same. The only variation will come later and I will show you that. So when you start a hat top down, you are starting at the crown of the head and you are working to the body and then finishing with the brim. I always usually do my hats with the uh, front post, back post, double crochet. Um, I occasionally make a band and attach it, but that is less time effective for me, but it is an option that you can do. So I'm going to go ahead and just do a basic, a basic start to a hat, and then you'll see how you can size it to any size. So I'm going to do double crochets. So I already chained one here to secure it. I'm going to chain another. And when I make a hat, in the round. I do not count my first chain two as a stitch. That is just something as a filler so that there are no gaps. And I'm going to put 12 double crochet in in my magic circle here. And like I said, you could do single crochet, you could do half double. It just depends on what your favorite stitch is. Mine happens to be a double crochet, and I know a lot of people don't like double crochet as, as like their main stitch, but when I relearned how to crochet in 2005, that is the stitch um, that I used to relearn. That, that was my go-to stitch, so it is still my go-to stitch. It's the most natural feeling to me to do because I have done it so much, I guess. It just all depends on what you learned on and what you prefer. All right, let me count them. So that chain two is not a stitch for me. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten. 10. I'm gonna do two more. Okay, that puts me at 12 double crochets. And now I'm going to slip stitch into the top of the first double crochet. I'm going to pull my magic loop. Okay. And then this is my chain two right here. I'm going to slip stitch up here. That way every single round, I do not have a gap there all the way down the hat. That would be my round one for a magic circle method. And now I will show you the chain four method. All right, the chain four method is doing a slip knot. I'll 
do that again. I wrap it around my finger. I pull this up. I push the working yarn through, pull up a loop, and then pull tight. And then you have an adjustable slip, slip knot. All right, and then you would chain four and you would slip stitch into your first chain. And that gives you a ring, and that is what you would work your double crochets in. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I always chain two at the beginning of all of my rounds for my hats, and that is not a stitch. And then I'll put 12 double crochets in this ring. Two, three, holding this so that it goes around the ring here so that when I need to I can pull that uh, hole shut at the end. Okay, I have 12 double crochets. I'm going to pull this tight. And then I'm going to slip stitch in my first double crochet. I'm going to ignore the chain two here and slip stitch at the top of my first double crochet. And that will give it some filler space like we did with the magic circle. Okay, looks exactly the same as the magic circle. So it is just whatever you um, prefer. Okay, so um, working in the round four hats that are top down, we increase. So the increase is going to be, I do it every single round. Um, different hat patterns have different methods. This is the method that I choose. So I always chain two at the beginning of every single round. And then increase in each round will be um, well, it will begin with a double increase. We begin with two double crochets in each stitch. The next round will be two double crochets in the first stitch, and then one double crochet, and then two double crochets, and then one. And then we'll proceed from that, and we go up from there. Until we meet the diameter that we need. So I'm going to go ahead and show you what the diameter is of this starting here so that you can know where you're at to begin with. All right, so I'm going to measure this. Obviously, this is not going to fit most humans, but I just want to show you what, what we're starting at. We're starting at about one and three fourths inches here. Okay, so we would take that times 3.142, which is giving you a circumference measurement. So we have one and three fours. We would go times 3.142, which is pi, and we would get their circumference of the hat would be about 5.5 inches, okay? So if we kept going, if we did not increase any more on this tiny little hat and we just continued on, our hat would be five inches around. That is, it's pretty small. So we're gonna keep going and we're gonna do our next round, which uh, like I said, is going to be two double crochets in each stitch. So even though we are starting with a chain two, we're not counting that chain two ever, I'm going to put the two first double crochets in the same spot as this chain two. Because that is still a stitch, we just need to make sure there's a chain two there to make sure there's no gaps in the hat. 
Okay, so two in each stitch all the way around. So we had 12 stitches to begin with. We should have 24 when we are done. So one, two, three, four, Oh, I have a whole bunch of yarn coming my way. I have to untangle. Seven. Okay, we have 24 stitches at the end of our round two. I'm going to slip stitch in the first double crochet, ignoring the chain two. Make sure you always do that or you're going to end up with extra stitches. You do not want that. All right, let's measure this one and find out what the diameter is of this. Now, like I said, you could be using single crochet, half double crochet, whatever stitch you are making your hat in. We got three inches on this one. So we would take three times 3.14 to find out what our circumference would be. Get this in, there we go. Three times 3.142, we're looking at about nine, almost a half inches, nine and a half inches. That actually would probably fit a, um, like a really, really small preemie. So if you're looking to make a preemie hat, a really, really small preemie, um, like a micro preemie, that this is where you would stop and then you would work down from there. Okay. So it obviously for such a tiny, tiny head, it's not going to be a very big hat. Um, so the stitch we are using for this first pay it, paying it forward Friday would, I mean, it would work, but it would be a very small amount that you would be doing. Um, and then the, the body of the hat would be much smaller, um, but we'll get into all that in a minute. But if you're making a micro preemie size hat, then you would stop here because your circumference is going to end up being about nine and a half and that is plenty big enough. All right, but we're gonna keep going. So that was our first increase round. We're going to do one more increase round. Gonna chain two put two double crochets in that same stitch as the chain two. And then one double crochet in the next stitch. Two double crochets in the next. One double crochet in the next. Just repeat that all the way around. You can count while you go, or you can count at the end. When you're starting with an even number of your stitches, 
and you increase this way, you'll always have an even number at the end of every round that you do. I have to, um, <laughs> I have to take care of that. You could go ahead and work your round. Since this is what all came out at the, uh, the beginning when I pulled yarn up of this skein. I gotta get it figured out a bit. We need two in that one. One in that one. Two. Um. Also, if you are using a different stitch other than double crochet, it could take you more increased rounds to get to the size that you need because your stitch is smaller. So if you're doing single crochets, it's going to take you more rounds to get to this place because the stitches are shorter. It's going to give you less of a fabric. But that's also helpful as well. So. I will get into that in just one second here. I just need to get to the end of my round. Trying to stay in camera. Uh, I think I figured my camera jiggling solution in here. Seems to be working well. I had um, the post that I used to use for my videos. I found and I messed up there I need a double here I have my wire that holds my camera I have it thread through that so that it does not wiggle all right so at the end of the round let's count our stitches two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen 36 stitches at the end of round three. All right, I'm going to slip stitch into that first double crochet, ignoring the chain two. And then I'm going to measure this to see where we're at because now we're getting a little bigger. And this is what you would do every single time you're creating a hat top down. You would just stop each row and check your measurement and see where you're at. Okay, now we're at four inches. So now we would take our calculator, which I would normally take my phone, but I'm using my phone to record. So it was interesting to find an actual calculator in the house. Okay. 4 times 3.142. Now we're at 12 and a half inches. So at 12 and a half inches, you're looking at a preemie size. Might be, might be a smidge large for preemie, but it is a good size because once you work the body, the brim of your hat, um, if you're if you're doing um, a stitch that's going to pull in a bit, it would be a little more snug on the head. Also, people's um, head sizes quite vary. So this is just like a general, a general size for everybody's head, but everybody is so unique and different. So there is no one size fits all unless you can tailor the hat to fit somebody. And I can show you how to measure somebody as well when you're doing that. So this would, uh, this would fit a preemie. We're looking at um, 12 and a half inches. This could be a small newborn size. There's also stretch in this yarn. So you're looking at a wide variety of heads that th this could fit on. See the stretch in that yarn? So we're looking at quite a few sizes. If you're looking at any newborn size that is smaller on the smaller size of newborn, then you would stop here. 
Well, let's say you don't want to do another full round of double crochets and, and you just want, you want a, a fairly medium newborn size that's going to fit most newborns. So most newborns heads are 12 to 14 inches uh, in circumference. So this is what I was getting to uh, a little bit earlier. So if you need to adjust the size, uh, like micro adjust the size, because if you did another round of double crochets, it probably would be too large. So since you're doing double crochets, you have two options. You can do a single crochet round and see what the size is after that, or you could do a half double crochet round and see what the size is of that. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a round of half double crochets just to show you what it would be like if you were trying to fit like a basic newborn size. So I would chain two still, and I would put two half double crochets in the stitch, because this is still an increase round. If you're still trying to increase, this would be an increase round still. So we would still go on pattern. Our first stitch would be two. And then since this is round four, we are doing two singles. So we would be doing one half double crochet and then another half double crochet. Okay, and then in the next stitch we would do two. And then next stitch we would do one half double, next stitch we would do one half double, next stitch we would be doing two half doubles. And this is going to give you a smaller size than if you had done double crochets. Okay. I feel like I'm messing that up, am I? Two, one, two, two. No, I'm fine. Usually when I'm crocheting, I silently count to myself just to keep on track because I don't like ripping out. I mean, I do, but I don't like to. Hi, Bingo. What are you doing? Did you eat your breakfast? Also a reminder about when you get to the end of every round, when you are working your stitches, uh, when you're starting with two stitches in your first stitch, it'll always end on a stitch that's not two in the stitch. So if you're starting with two, you'll end with one. All right, let's count those and then we'll measure it. I'll close that up in a second here. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. I feel like I'm losing those stitches in there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Twenty, twenty-one, 
this is not right. All right, let's count them. I'm gonna count them with my finger. So there is 48. All right, let me close this and then we'll measure it. Slip stitch in the, to the top of the first half double crochet, ignoring that chain two. All right. Now we're at five inches. Let's find out what five inches would measure out to be circumference wise. Yes, so now we're at 15, over 15 and a half. So we're looking at, we're looking at a, a really large newborn and or the beginning of like the size of a three, a three month old. So then your option would be, if that is too big for the hat that you want, you can go back since we started with double crochets you can go back take this half double crochet round out and do single crochets and i bet we're going to get a slightly smaller measurement when we do that so we're at five inches there i'm going to pull this all out because this is how we learn this is how we figure out the size that we need to make the hat that fits so since we're doing a single crochet round, I'm only going to chain one. And then I'm going to put two singles in this first space. And one single in the next, one single in the next, two singles in the next. And that will be our repeat for all the way around here. So usually when I'm crocheting and I'm listening to something, I'll be like, Counting in my head silently, I'll go one, 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 two. <laughs> That's how I do it, to keep on track. We all have our ways to figure out how to keep, keep the number straight in our head. And we ended with a single, which is the way it should be. Now I'm going to slip stitch into the first single crochet and take a look at our size now. It does look a tiny bit smaller. Yep, we're at four and a half now ish. So let's find out what four and a half would be circumference wise once we times it times pi. So four and a half times 3.142. We're looking at 14, a little over 14 inches in circumference, which would be perfect for newborn size. Uh, that's That would be to me a basic newborn size. So not that children are basic, I'm just saying the hat is a basic uh, newborn size. So if you are making a newborn size, if you're going to make newborn hats, um, I would go ahead and stop here if that's where you're at measurement wise. If you are anywhere near around uh, anywhere 12 to 14 inches in size um, and you're making newborn hats, 
that's where I would stop if I was doing them. And then from here on the hat, you would not increase. You would just put a stitch in every stitch all the way around so that you weren't increasing and it wasn't getting larger so that when the hat was made down, it wouldn't flare out. Okay, on the body part. But I'm going to show you an adult size hat. So I'm gonna go ahead and take out the single crochet row. I just was doing that to show you how to get the size that you need. And uh, that that is one of the benefits of, of crochet is that it's so quick that it doesn't matter. You just you pull it out and you start over. It's kind of nice. Uh, knitting is a lot more work, so I don't typically like to do that. <laughs> I'm going to take out the single crochet row because I'm going to continue in double crochets. Because for me, that is my favorite stitch and it is much faster. All right, so Pretending we never did any of that and we keep going with double crochets, we would be on our round four and we would chain two. I did have one there. Two double crochets go in the same space. And then we put one double crochet in the next stitch, one double crochet in the next stitch, two double crochets in the next stitch. If you had um, ever seen my hat pattern that I made with a red heart, uh, that gorgeous basic beanie, it, uh, I do believe that I went through this a uh, little bit at the beginning of the video, um, possibly at the beginning of all of my hat videos. It is the way I do my hats. I rarely make a hat from the bottom up, really, really rarely. Uh, I do in knitting. But as far as crochet goes, for me, uh, hats that are top down are way faster for me to make. And I guess that just depends on what you're used to. It works well for me and I can get the size that I need best that way. I am going to show you how to do it um, another way as well. And also when you're making items for charity, sometimes you do just like the basic stitches. You, you just want to do a hat and double crochet or single crochet or half double crochet. And that's, that's great. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, myself as a maker, I like to switch things up. I get bored very easily. So whether it be the yarn, uh, patterning, color, texture, size, um, the stitches I use, I like to change it up. I hope I'm keeping in count with the stitches. I'll go back and check in a second here. I think I am. If not, I will be redoing it. So it goes. Happens all the time when I'm watching TV. Oh, I think I'm wrong. <laughs> I think I'm definitely wrong. I have three stitches left, so I'm wrong. I am wrong. So let's double check here. Two, one, two, two, one, two, two, one, two, two, one, two. Aha, uh -huh. right here. Dang it, I go all the way back. I should have paid attention, don't forget. That's okay, practice, right? A little cr extra crocheting never hurt anyone, unless they have arthritis <laughs> like me. <laughs> That's fine. Been through worse, right? That's what I always tell myself when when things get rough. Been through worse. I can handle whatever. Been through worse. You can probably hear the birds. 
thinking about outside. They're very happy today. We've actually had quite a bit of rain recently. It's been very humid here, which is unusual for us. So it's good and bad, of course. But it makes the birds happy because it brings the worms up. See, I'm messing up already because I'm talking. Am I? Two, one, two, two, one, two, nope. Get lost in those stitches. This is actually a very nice color of yarn as well. What was the name of it? Sea Blue. Yeah. Here we go. Here in his kitchen. This one gets two, and then I end with a double crochet and a double crochet. Alright, so if I counted right, we should have the same stitch count as we did when we started on our half double crochets. I think it should be 48. Let me check here. Don't count the chain two. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, twenty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, forty, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, This is the tape measure I got at Hobby Lobby on clearance. Pretty darn cute. Looks like a ball of yarn. Now we're at five and a half inches if we're doing double crochet, at least if you're crocheting like I crochet. Clearly you are not me and I'm not you. And your measurement may or may not be mine. If it is smaller and you need to go larger, Go ahead and do what I did before. Do either a half double crochet round or a single crochet round. If you are at the same measurement that I am at, let me calculate it for you. Get the calculator in here so you can see it. So we're at five and a half. And we are timesing that times 3.142. Now we're at 17.28. So a little over 17 inches. We are looking at around a six month old head. So uh, if you are making a three to three month old size, um, you probably want to take that row out, that round out and do a single crochet round or a half double crochet round, make it a little bit smaller. The average three month old size hat should be around 15 to 16 inches in circumference ish. Like I said, nothing is magical here. It's not a uh, one size fits all. That's just a basic general size. Everybody is unique. So right now this is too small for an adult hat. I am not going to rip back because I'm going to keep going and I want it to get larger. I, I'm looking for an adult size head, probably a woman's size, which I'm hitting the mark around 22 inches for a general woman size head. And so I have to keep increasing until I get the circumference that's going to be that. So I'm going to start another round. Right now I am untangling yarn while I talk to you, because I, um, I have a situation where I have to pass the yarn through to get it out of its mess here. All right, so we're gonna continue on, get to an adult size hat. We are going to chain two. 
And this is our one, two, three, four, round five. So we are going to put two double crochets in that first stitch. And then we're going to do one double crochet in the next, one double crochet in the next, one double crochet in the next, two double crochets in the next. So our repeat will be two in the first stitch and then one double crochet in the next three stitches and then two double crochets. I'm going to repeat that all the way around. I love hearing the birds sing. When I was a kid, I played outside all the time. Um, in the dirt with Hot Wheels and Matchbox cars and uh, Barbies and whatever else. I just loved being outside and I still do. But um, we lived next to a farmer's field and uh, there were always like meadow larks around and that's um, a typical bird in my area. And I loved listening to them because you know, when you're a kid and, and you're playing, even if you have other children around, like I had my older brother around, so we didn't always talk, we just played, you know? Um, we were in our own, own little fantasy in our head, <laughs> playing whatever, I don't know. We didn't always sit around and just talk, is what I'm saying. And uh, so I got a lot of time to listen to birds when I was a kid, and I absolutely love listening to birds now. I am playing with my yarn. I have some weird thing going on here. I'll show you. And it's not, I have to pass the yarn through, the skein through it, to get whatever happened. I'm done. I didn't do it. Anyway, I think it brings me, um, it brings me happy feelings because it takes me back to my childhood. And they're always happy, you know that? Unless birds are like, fighting over um, worms or a nest. They're typically just happy-go-lucky. My dog is starting to snore, so if you hear something weird like a snore, that is bingo sleeping. Currently in my office where I work during the day, and that is how he works during the day. He sleeps. All right, continuing on in pattern. I actually am not sure what birds I'm hearing right now. I know there's finches around here and they absolutely adore our trees that we have because they're really full and they give them a lot of cover for the other predators around. We do have hawks in our area and I've seen owls as well. And so they like trees that are full that will give them a little bit of cover. I got one, one, two, three, this needs to be two. So I know we have some sort of finch I know we have metal larks. I know we have sterlings, I believe they're called, and they are mostly black with a little bit of red on them. Starlings, sterlings, I'm not sure. I've seen this really awesome, cool bluebird one time. Try to take a picture of them. This was 
a long time ago when I had a terrible camera. He was so pretty, so, so pretty. I think I looked it up at the time, but I do not remember what that bird was. And then of course we have homing pigeons, but they're, they don't chirp pretty like this. They coo and whatnot. And then the, the bird when I was growing up made sort of a, like something like that and I'm not sure what bird it is I thought it was meadowlark but I'm not positive love hearing that those were the birds that were next to us in the farm field it's like I don't know a lot about birds but I do love them And I think they know that. I think they know they're all welcome here because they have no problem being in the yard. They've even come accustomed to Bingo not, you know, doing anything to them because I tell him to be nice to the birds because we own birds, so he has to behave. All right, ending on a single stitch there. So we know we did it all the way around correctly. I will count my stitches. I need to hold it closer because I cannot see. This is our chain too, so we're not including that. So, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, forty, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, 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 forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six,
This is for in the round. So if I was going to make a cowl in the round, I would chain as many as I want to get over the size head that you're making it for in even numbers and then join it in the circle. Just as if this was completely empty and you made a chain all the way around and joined it. This is how you would do a pattern for a circular cowl in the round with a lemon peel stitch. All right, so I am going to chain one. Now we're gonna start our lemon peel stitch. So every other stitch is going to be either single or double crochet. We are going to start with a single crochet and then a double crochet. Single crochet, double crochet, single crochet, double crochet. We're going to do this all the way around the hat. At the end, we are going to have 60 stitches. because we are not increasing anymore. You might be able to hear our pigeons now. We hear them cooing at each other. We have had a lot of fireworks in the area. Um, they're allowed to shoot them off through, I think, the following weekend after, after the 4th. So today has been pretty quiet, although it is like 8, 9 in the morning right now. So unless it's children shooting them off, then it's, it's pretty quiet during the day. You hear some firecrackers here and there, but... All the big ones were pretty much completed Saturday, Sunday, Monday. And it's been raining here a lot, which is nice because, of course, the fire danger. The fire danger is usually high around here anyway because we're so dry, but we've had a lot of moisture and it's been humid and I, I, that is a great blessing. I'm glad. I'm not used to it, and it, it kind of feels gross <laughs> sometimes, but necessary is necessary, right? I gotta get some yarn out here because I have caught up with my skein. And like I said before, if you do not want to do the lemon peel stitch for your Hats that you're giving to charity and donating, don't just do a basic hat. It does not matter. Like I said previously, you can do whatever you want. This is all on you. You get to choose. Do what makes you happy and then give it away and make someone else happy. Sometimes it's just nice to make and not have to go by any particular set of rules. Okay, so remember, we started our round with a single crochet. Now we have to end our round with a double crochet to stay in pattern. We are going to slip stitch into that first single crochet. Don't worry about the chain one, remember? We're curling a bit, so I'm gonna curl it back out. So this round, we're gonna alternate. Wherever you had a single crochet before, you need to put a double crochet in there and vice versa. So I'm gonna chain one. This was a single crochet, so I'm going to do double and then go in pattern from there. If I did it correctly, next one should be single, next one should be double. Single, double, single, double. And it looks like it is working. Very easy. That is uh, one of the reasons that I love this stitch so much is because it is so easy 
but it's so interesting and there's a lovely texture to it that I find very pleasing. Um, next week I will be showing you what I have made, at least the progress of what I have made, uh, finished objects and whatnot, using the lemon peel stitch. And I, I feel like I didn't do much, but I was trying to gather it up this morning and I have quite a bit. I have not decided where I'm going to donate to yet. I think I may wait until the end of the year and donate a whole bunch of different stuff to different places. You know, um, baby items maybe to places that need baby items and maybe um, women's, women's shelter. We do have um, we do have a place here, a couple of places that take donations for all ages, all sexes. So that's always an option. I know a lot of places have requirements on what sizes they want and what type of yarn they want. Um, so if you're looking to donate somewhere in particular that you are aware of, double check on their requirements if they have any for items that are made. And also, you know, you can always, you can make these items for not any particular um, institution, but you can make these items and give them to your goodwill. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. I love seeing items at Goodwill. I usually pick them up when I see them that are in need of rescuing. And some of the blankets there, it's crazy. They're so nice and they're like four or five dollars. Slip stitch into the top of your previous rounds. First stitch, ignoring the chain one. And then you have two rows of that done. So. To look at this hat, you can see that the beginning wasn't done in, in lemon peel stitch, but it doesn't look crazy to start the lemon peel stitch. It actually looks very nice, I think. And this part is going to be on the top of the head anyway, so it's going to be seen less as someone wears it. All right, so we chain one. Since we started with a double crochet last round, we are going to do a single crochet and then a double, and then a single. Also, if you guys have any suggestions or um, just wanna share where you donate to and what kind of items you donate, it could give somebody ideas um, to, around in their area to donate or call and find out if they take donations. Um, a lot of people like to make blankets up for dogs and cats as well, and don't they donate them to the local shelters for animals. I need some more yarn, and that could be that could be a, a good way to get rid of some rough yarn maybe that you're not particularly interested in making somebody to wear on their skin. Dogs don't care. My dog actually likes to lay on very lumpy things. I made him a blanket out of Bernat blanket yarn. It's like a marbled Bernat blanket. It was a um, like a waffle stitch, I believe. It's really thick and cozy and nice. He, uh, he prefers rumpling up our living room rug and laying on it instead of that soft blanket. So that's the way it goes. 
but in um, a lot of shelters they don't have they don't have a lot of blankets and stuff for for animals to cozy up to so I know they do take donations different places I have not called my local shelter I know there's more than one as well but I haven't called the bigger one um, to find out if they take donations but that is an option I know when I first started crocheting, I had to make everything. In my brain, I was like, gotta make, gotta make everything. I need to make that, I need to do that. So I'd make all of these items, um, and then I would have all of these items sitting around. At one point, I was trying to sell them on Etsy, um, and I did, you know, I've done sales on Etsy, not, I'm not, um, I'm not a crazy seller or anything like 15, 1600, but uh, it just got really hard. Uh, it seemed like every time I put something in my shop, somebody wanted it in a different color and then I was making different stuff anyway. And then I started my job. So I quit doing that, but um, I would make and make and make things just because I loved making things. And then I had all these things and then that's that's good for donation then. All right, so we're forming a hat up, as you can see. We are going to slip stitch into our first single crochet. And we are going to chain one. And since that was a single crochet, we will now start with a double crochet and then a single crochet. And it is just as easy as that. So if you are making a cowl and you chained as many as you needed to change, oops, as many as you needed to change <laughs> as many as you needed to chain to get an even number and then you joined in the round this is what you would be doing every single round you would just alternate with the stitches that you start with and then you end up putting double crochets and single crochets of the previous rows rounds if I ever say rows and I mean rounds, you know what I mean. It's just habit. And it's very easy to look at your work too. If you stop and pause, you can tell that this is a double crochet and this is a single. So, you know, if you have to answer your phone, answer your door, take care of kids, take care of dogs, take care of whatever, cook, clean, leave, come back, whatever you're doing, you pick up your work and you just read it by looking at your stitches and you'll know, oh yeah, well, I was single crochet last time, so I need to do a double crochet. Very easy. And I think this is gorgeous in a cowl. I will show you the one that I have made um, that I did up in this. Not this color, it's a different color. It was some scrap yarn I had left and it's actually quite gorgeous. It's funny how I put, I put a bunch of yarn away that I thought was less than desirable, um, in comparison to the newer yarns that I've been buying that I want to work with. Um, <clears throat> But um, get digging into my stash that I had put in the closet, I have a lot of good yarn. Might not be expensive yarn, but I like it nonetheless. My hybrid hook is working out very nice. All right, let's take a look. See how you can see the, the lemon peel stitch now? We have normal double crochets up until here, and then we have lemon peel. And it's just so pretty. I just love the stitch. 
Okay, so let's talk about the second measurement. So let me get my notebook here. I'll show you a little uh, really, really, really terrible diagram that I'll draw you. All right, so we have hats, right? And we're starting with ours top down. This is the hat. And this is where we started. And we increased until we got to here. And now we're just doing the body of the hat. And then we'll have ribbing down here. So the first measurement you want to take on somebody is you want to take the circumference of their head. So the widest part of their head, usually right around the ear area and the forehead area. So when you're looking at somebody, if you're looking at somebody to measure them, excuse my drawing. Okay, you would take the measurement You take their measurement and you put a tape measure around their head, their forehead, all the way around the ear to the back of the head, all the way around to the other side. Now, if you're making it for, you know, like I'm making mine for an adult female, you're looking, you're probably gonna find that the range is from 20 to 22 inches for females, roughly average, okay? The other measurement that you need to take is how far down on the head you want it to go. So we started here and now we're working down. How far are we gonna work down? How far do you wanna go down? So there are a couple of options here. So you can do a basic beanie, go down to eyebrow level, you know, right here where we're measuring and stop. Now I have typical measurements for those for all age ranges and you can you can go by them it's just a standard basic um, average size that you can go by if you're not if you're not going by that and you do have the person that you're making the hat for that you're you can measure them you know you can go to them and measure them to make sure it fits them correctly so you want to measure from the top of their head to wherever they want it to hit. If they want a hat that folds over, you know, a brim that folds up, once you're done making your hat and you wanna fold the brim up, you have to allow for extra stitching. You gotta go down further. So your measurement will be longer if you're going to go all the way down here and then we're gonna fold the hat back up. See what I'm saying? If they just want the basic beanie, then you need to measure from the top of the head to around the eyebrow level. And then, you know, how they put it on their head is going to fit and cover their ear. Okay. So that's the second measurement. So on average, um, and again, nothing is 100%, but on average, uh, the typical woman's hat should be about eight inches from the top to the eyebrows. Now that's that's not all going to be body. So we got to we got to watch our measurements as we're making the hat from the top down. Because we are going to do a brim unless you're doing the kind of hat that folds up the brim. We need to stop so that we don't get too large of a hat. So, sorry about that. I'm going to measure what I have now. I have five inches right now. If I do a two inch brim, let's scoot this up. If I do a two inch brim, I need to stop. I need to stop making the body of my hat around six inches. This wants to roll away. I'm trying to make it not roll away. Okay.
So I would need to work down at least one to one and a half inches in the lemon peel stitch and then start doing the brim to the eight inch mark. If you're going to do a hat that folds up, you can go down as far as you want. Just know that wherever, however far you go down, you will be folding up. So, I mean, don't go too far or you're gonna, you're gonna have a lot of fold, but that's also up to you. You can design the hat any way you want. It is, it is your make to do. So that's our second measurement. So you'll just know work the body, the top and the body of your hat, if you're making it for a woman, to about six to six and a half inches, and then start your brim. If you're making a man size, the top to eyebrow area would be about eight and a half inches, but it is all depending on who you're making it for, but that's the general size. If you're making, um, if you're making younger, if you're making a newborn size, it would be about four and a half inches. If you are making three, three month size, you're looking at about five inches, six month size, five and a half inches. A 12 month size, one year old would be about six inches. A 2T would be about six and a half. Three to five would be about seven inches. A child or teen would be about seven and a half and preemie would be four inches. Uh, micro preemie would be about three and a half. But again, this is all general. It, did, it also depends on where you look. If you Googled hat size chart, circumference of heads, you're gonna get lots and lots and lots and lots of different answers because we're all different. We're, there's, it's ever changing. No, one, no one's going to be exactly the same size as the next person, so it's all all generalized so generally if you make a hat with an average size it's going to fit an average size person and then if you know someone has a larger head then uh, see if you can get their measurements from them and if not go ahead and make your hat a little larger if you're making for donating and then there are larger sizes for larger people it's just as simple as that so I'm going to continue on. I'm going to do the lemon peel stitch for an inch to an inch and a half. And then I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to do the brim. Remember, we're always chaining one and looking at our stitches because I put my work down, so I don't remember what I ended on. I look at my work, I ended on a single crochet. I have a double crochet from my last round, so I'm gonna do a single crochet. And then continue to work in pattern. And I will probably speed up this so that you don't have to take so long looking at work.
All right, I'm at the almost six and a half inch mark, pretty much M. So I'm going to start my brim. So it's going to be alternating front and back post double crochets. And it's going to be about two inches or so in length. So to start that, I am going to chain two, does not count as a stitch. There are going to be single crochets and there's going to be double crochets. So the first one is going to be whatever row you leave off with, you will do a front post double crochet. Okay. And then the next one you'll do a back post double crochet. Just go in and around those stitches. alternating front post double crochet and back post double crochet all the way around your hat this gives it a nice ribbing to wear when somebody is wearing it it will not uh, not be loose on their head It also won't be too tight. This stitch, the way it's worked up, makes it easy to be comfortable while wearing a hat. It, it does not get too tight around your head. Sometimes a tight hat can give you a headache.
Okay, when you get to the end of your round, you'll see your chain two there. You're gonna ignore that. You're going to slip stitch in the top of your first post double crochet there. All right, let's take a look at the front of it. All right, you see how the ribbing is down there? Very nice, and it's pulling in a bit, as you can tell. So that row we're going to repeat, that round we're going to repeat until you have the length that you need for your entire measurement. Uh, like I said, for uh, the woman's hat, I'm going to eight inches because that's the average size for the height from here to here. From top to say eyebrow area. So every row, every round after you're going to chain two, you're going to put a front you're going to put a front post double crochet in all the front post double crochets and a back post double crochet in all the back post double crochets I feel like I'm getting, I'm already getting close to the eight inches here. Right, so remember, if you have any questions about anything, just ask me in the comment section. Like I said, I would be going over any questions I received via email or in the comments next Friday while I show what I have made or at least what I have in progress. They might not always be done, because I am human. I also get distracted very easily by other things to do. I have two patterns that I need to do up videos for that I have done. Um, I have reviews to do. I have a package coming today I'm doing a review on, or a opening, not a review, an opening, showing you what I get. That's exciting, because I have never, never received one of them before. Uh, I did buy a ball winder that I want to do a review on that is good and bad. What do we have here? Seven inches. So I need to go a little bit more, but boy, that looks great. I like the way that looks a lot. I need to go a little bit more though to get to that eight inch mark. And I can, I can try this one on myself to see if it fits. Remember always starting with front post and then going to back post. 
If you enjoy making a different type of brim, even if you have done a top down, you can do the ribbed brim like people do, and you can attach it after you've done top down. That's an option. I know some people like to do single crochets and then do a back bump or camel stitch. I believe that's what it's called. And then there's uh, like um, lines that go all the way around the hat. Um, you're more than welcome to do that too. Whatever brim makes you happy, go ahead and do. This is just my preferred method. It's the easiest for me. Uh, in my opinion, it's the most versatile as far as size-wise goes. Uh, it helps. It still has a lot of stretch to it, but it's still comfortable if you're right at that exact measurement and it's not too tight. Also, if you wanted to do this method and then do a fold up brim, you sure could. This isn't exclusive to beanies. You can do this for several more inches and then this could be a flip up hat. I'll show you when I'm done here at this round. What that would sort of look like, uh, I'm not going to do it to this beanie, but if you were doing, doing, if you wanted to do it to make sure that it fit whoever owns it, then you could keep going in the same stitch further and then it can just be a flip up one. Always slip stitch to the top of your first post double crochet. Okay, so if I was going to keep going uh, with the ribbing section, I could do that. I could go down three, four more inches and then fold it up. And when you fold it up, it would just look like this. Very nice. So that is definitely an option if you are worried about this section's length and you want to make sure that it fits whoever owns it. I'm going to measure this again, although I don't think it's at eight inches. I'm going to measure it anyway, because if it is, then I need to stop. No, I didn't think it was. We're at seven, almost a half. Yeah. Probably one more round. And then I will try it on and see if it fits my head. If it does and it hits my um, eyebrows and the bottom of my ears, then I will stop. I'll show you the yarn that I purchased to go with this color. I think it would make a nice pom-pom uh, on the top. So I probably will do that. Hobby Lobby has such nice yarn. Even their acrylic, even the non-premium acrylic, this yarn is so nice. It is, I would say, one of my very favorite yarns for price, yardage, feel, durability, pilling. Love it. Love, love, love it. They did good. I do have some of their soft and sleek I need to work up because that feels amazing. Also looks very, 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 very similar to Premier's anti-pilling. Um, I think it's called 
batik, anti-pilling batik, I'm not sure. I haven't ordered any. I also want to do an ice, ice yarns order at some time because there are several things over there I want to purchase. Their yarn is, um, a lot of their yarn is created for other yarn companies, so pretty sure the anti-pilling batik is in their line. They have identical colorways, so might order some of that and compare the two because I, I'm i pretty good at identifying yarn patterns and whatnot. <laughs> and I was looking at the anti-pilling from Premier, and I also look at Ice Yarns website all the time to see what they have coming out. And I own several of their yarns that I find very, very good quality. I think there's only been one yarn that I purchased from them that I didn't particularly like. And that was, a, it said it was 100% wool and when I went to felt it, it would not felt. And I emailed them about it and they were like, well, sorry bud. And that's fine. Like I can find a use for it, it's not a big deal. It was the only one though. I just was like, am I wrong? Did, you know, is, is the website wrong? Did I, did I read it wrong? It says wool. But it, yeah, it was supposed to felt, it did not. That's okay, because everything there is very, already way more affordable than you can find at your local yarn store, unless it's clearance like Hobby Lobby clearance. Um, so yeah, it's, it's worth buying even if, even if it wasn't exactly what I expected. Still a good yarn, just doesn't felt. All right. Oh, I am there. Surprise. I'll measure again. Sure looks good. Looking pretty spiffy. Okay. Matthew, I'm going to try it on before I disconnect it. It is far too warm for a hat, but for a couple of seconds, I will try it on. Take the bun out of my hair so it fits. Oh yeah, this fits well over my ears to my eyebrows. This is nice. It's not tight at all. Very good. Love it. Okay, so that is how you do the lemon peel stitch in the round, starting with a basic beginning of the, the top of your hat, and then a ribbing, the back post and front post double crochet ribbing. Like I said, you could go further and then this could be a fold up hat, such as this, except you'd wanna go longer. Looks great. It's a great look because it's identical to this side. <laughs> So let me grab my other hat and cowl and I'll show you what you can do as an alternate. All right, so if you do not like working in the round, you can create a hat with a rectangle. This is going to be a cowl, but if you don't like working in the round, you can go ahead and create a flat piece and then sew it up the side. So this, this would be a large hat, but it's the same concept. So you would create your piece, the length that you would need to create it for the circumference of the head that you're creating it for. So you would start your measurement, um, you would chain your first chain in multiples of two, to the measurement that you need to create for whatever size you're making. So if you're making adult size head, adult female head, you would need to make it uh, 22 inches. So you would make your chain to 22 inches 
and then you would do it in in flat stitch like I showed you last week for the lemon peel go back and forth back and forth you would go up as far as you wanted to go but you would need to do a brim so you've got to leave room for a brim so this measures this measures uh, seven and a half inches so this is why this is going to be a cowl if I was going to do a flat hat like this, I would probably do, I, I would go ahead and probably do the seven and a half inches. And then um, I'll show you what you do at the end. But first I'm gonna show you how you would do the brim if you were doing a flat piece to begin with. So you're working flat and you're going along. Do I have this? pulled and you want to do the front post back post double crochet at the end you still would do the same exact thing we did in the round you would just do front post back post front post back post okay and you can continue on this was seven and a half inches so you would probably want to go one to two inches more, probably two inches, because pretend I have a band on the bottom here, like it's already ready to go. Let's say this is the hat, I have the band down here. I worked flat, so I'm going to sew up the side and the band will be down here. So I'm gonna sew all of that up. And you can sew it up any way you like. I just weave in and out, uh, being consistent where with I'm weaving in and out so that it doesn't look wonky. And then for the top of the hat, you would take, I don't wanna cut this, but you would take a length of yarn because I need to sew up my side still. I guess I could sew up my side and show you. Yeah, I'll do that. Let me grab a, a needle real quick. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and break the yarn and then show you how I am going to sew up the side of this cowl so that you have some idea if you do not know how to do that or are wondering So this end needs to be weaved in. Better do that first. Well, get off the needle. I will have to cut that off. I do not have scissors in here. Okay, I'm gonna thread this and show you how I would sew it up. And then I'll show you how I would finish this hat worked in the flat as far as the crown goes up at the top of the head. So that is one of the reasons you would make this about seven and a half inches um, because you would need that extra room for the crown because you don't have the decreasing that you would in uh, and the other hat top down. So I know a lot of you already know how to do this, but I always try to find the corner stitch when I'm doing something in the round so that it doesn't get lost and uh, be silly looking. A lot of times I will just grab a couple of stitches and go. I mean, it doesn't matter how you do this as long as you kind of stay consistent with what you're doing. 
The lemon peel stitch is very forgiving in this, in that it is already bumpy looking, so it's not, it's not a big to do if you do not get it perfect. I'm just grabbing a couple of loops on both sides, both sides so that it can join together, but not look like a crazy seam. Kind of so that it could be reversible. If you have a large seam, then you definitely have an inside or an outside. Make sure I get in that corner stitch here. Looks like it was a chain on both sides. Not terribly noticeable. Pretty much the same on both sides. So unless you're inspecting it, you would not notice. Okay, so let's pretend this is the bottom of my hat and I already have the brim done. Now I need to close up the top. So then I would just take, take my yarn that's attached to my project. If it's not attached, attach it. And then weave in and out of various spots in the top, like you're doing a drawstring bag. Okay, you just want to make sure you hit every few stitches in and out, go in and come out, go in, come out, all the way around. And I'm not making this a hat, so I'm not going to fasten it off, but I'm going to show you how to do it so that you can do yours if you want to do a hat flat. You just want to remember to get your measurements as far as how wide you need to be and the length of the crown to the forehead. So if you're making a hat in the flat, you need to make your fabric piece longer because you're cinching for the crown. Okay, so we would just weave in and out and then pull. And I'm sure we've all made hats this way in the beginning of our crafting days. And that is the crown then. So uh, it is clunky at the top, but it works. Once you put this hat on, that kind of fades out. And then your brim would be on the bottom. So that, that would work if you do not want to make a hat in the round. And if you do not make hats in the round, you probably already know how to do this. So I'm going to undo that because I am not making this hat and I'm going to weave in that end. And then I will set you up with some information in the description box on the sizes that are generally typical 
to the age ranges so that you have some sort of guide. You can also Google it. You can uh, use whatever search engine you use and type it in hat size for crocheting and then it will it will give you so many results your head will spin because there's so much information out there and it is all uh, depending on an average of humans so we're all different so I'm going to weave that in that's going to be a cowl so that is a lot of information <laughs> I understand but just know that there's a, a few different ways to do things. You can do the top down like I addressed at the beginning of the video, making sure that you're always slip stitching into your first stitch and not the chain twos or the chain ones, whatever you're doing. You can make it in any yarn, any hook. I used worsted weight yarn with an eye hook and my hat measured out to be 22 inches in circumference by eight inches from crown to brim. So that is an average adult woman. Basic stitching stops here, lemon peel stitch goes here, and then the ribbing. On the alternate, which is not a hat, uh, this is seven and a half inches from the top, and then you would add brim and cinch the top. Also, it just depends on the size you're making. So, but this would be an adult uh, female as well. I'll do this side by side so you can look. See the link there? Yeah, you can see it. So it fills the screen, but it's the same height as far as this being seven and a half inches flat. This is eight inches. So the cinching is going to take away a lot of your inches. See how that works? So yeah, just be aware of that if you're going to work in, in the, the flat version of a hat. So I'm going to let you go. If you have any questions at all regarding donations, charity, who to donate to, uh, what to look for, um, the size I'm going, the sizes, the basic sizes I'm going to put in the description box. But again, if you have any questions, let me know and I will answer them as I see them and or next week and I will address any email questions I have and then next week I will show you what I have done what I have in progress and then the Friday after we're doing another giveaway so look forward to that I'll probably purchase some yarn today actually so yes thank you so much for watching I appreciate it I I wish you all happy makes and um I will see you next Friday for the third Friday of the Paying It Forward Friday. Remember to use the hashtag Paying It Forward Friday on Instagram and YouTube so everyone can find your makes. If you have a YouTube channel and you want to share your work, put it in your tags for your video or your title. That would work too. So thank you every everyone for watching. I appreciate each and every one of you. And until next time, guys.